Um, so about that. Yep. Oh, from the very first release. But to be honest, being named the best gnome terminal isn't the hardest achievement in the world. Is it, Chief? The competition is basically in C, is pretty much quite inferiorly crafted both in look and features, and they all use VTE, which I don't have much expertise to judge, but literary everyone's talking poorly about it. All right, what ghosty does better? Um, actually, I'll go backwards and I'll tell you what doesn't do good. That's Ghosty's starting screen, and in the beginning it might look cool with the header bar and all. It even has a tabs overview. But then the problems come, because when we open a new tab that goes below the header bar... <laughs> I don't get what's wrong with the GNOME developers doing that all the time. <sighs> Screw the Mac, I guess. There is an option that allows us to disable the header bar that I totally love, but from that point on, there are massive drawbacks. For starters, the window corners have this annoying artifact that once you see it, you can't unseen it, and in fact, you will just keep staring at it. And okay, that corner situation is Gnome's big flaw for like 10 years, causing troubles in many more apps, but it's there nonetheless, making Ghosty looking stupid. Perhaps that will get fixed eventually when Ghosty contributors figure out Gnome APIs, but then it's the tab design that spoils all the magic. It uses default Adwaita styles, when in this case it should have a custom widget that would blend better with the rest of the window, because that thing is definitely a non-go. Um, basically it feels like the disabled header bars settings haven't been thought through much. For example, another problem here is that we're losing access to the app's main menu. That could have been moved in the context, but it isn't. And on top of all those, the header bar graphics option isn't even available on runtime, we should basically restart Ghosty for enabling or disabling it. Which is a big shame, because the visual experience could have been pretty nice, especially with the split terminals. That is one of the main points that make Ghosty the best GNOME terminal already, but not the only one. <laughs> now, besides the things I don't like and can show you, there are also the things I don't like but I can't show. Um, because they aren't even there. The first is the absence of a command palette that these days is basically everywhere, and especially in places for nerds like a terminal, and makes our everyday tasks so much easier and fun. The second is the miss of an integrated AI agent, which is a huge miss really, even if many of you strongly disagree, because you may can get some third-party CLI assistance, but when those aren't integrated into the app itself, they lose lots of their abilities and usefulness, like the easy access to output or some supervised access to the file system. So, eventually, people who use Warp will stay in Warp, and even more unfortunate, people who benefit from the AI and want AI anyway might switch to Warp. And I don't want to go out of context, but that's basically bad for open source. So by not supporting AI out of box, sometimes you're actually damaging community. Anywho, those personal complaints aside, there are a few more problems like a profiles feature that simply doesn't exist and I personally don't care about that much and of course there are the known issues too, but you know, after all those we get to the good stuff. And, and by good stuff, I actually mean the weird stuff. Extra weird, basically. Um, let me explain, okay? So, that's the official repository of Ghosty on GitHub. And just in case you didn't know already, Ghosty had a private beta for months, but it went open source just a few days ago. The plan was always to go open source. No idea why all this drama with the closed beta? I guess it's part of the rest of the weirdness, huh? Meanwhile, two days back it had 10,000 stars, but it got 14,000 inside a few hours? Whoa. Okay, what makes it weird? First off, the code is on Ziglang. And I'm not familiar at all with the language, so no idea how it uses the GTK through Zig. I guess it directly calls the C libraries. Anywho, that might be strange, because it's a first, a GTK program is written in Zig, and yet. That's far from being the top weird thing in this repo. That honor totally belongs to the macOS port. Alright, there are lots of apps that run both on Linux and macOS. But do you know any other that in the very same repository, have a UI in GTK for Linux, and one in Swift for macOS? I don't think so, Chief. The obvious benefit is that Ghosty provides both on Mac and Linux a native experience, so the terminal feels like it belongs to the desktop, at least if you run a GNOME desktop. But most importantly, Ghosty can get a super large pool of contributors. Does anyone believe this 15,000 stars came from the Linux developers? Yeah, sure. On the bad side? 
Actually, I don't think there is a bad side other than the additional code complexity, which is a necessary complexity. So, but one thing users should know is that some features may be available in Mac, but not in Linux and vice versa. For instance, Ghosty for Mac has a drop-down terminal that Ghosty calls it Quick Terminal, but that's not available in Linux edition, at least not yet. Bummer, huh? Um, let's see some of the Ghosty configuration maybe? The first thing I wanna show you is the configuration UI. Actually, I wanna show you the fact that there isn't a configuration UI. Instead, we have a text file to edit our settings, which is a very common interface in many terminals. And to be honest, it isn't as bad as it might seem, although I'd love it if we could have something similar to Zed Editor settings. So when we open Ghosty settings, we could have some auto-completion. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But let's not make a big deal out of it, because there is a reference page to guide us through all Ghosty's options that are plenty full. So we can change fonts, themes, set shortcuts, adjust the cursor style, change tabs policies, integrate our shell to the terminal, change the cell size, and lots more. There are also the fancy stuff, like support for custom shaders, and the stuff I'm not even sure what they do. Mom, let me show you, okay? Let's assume we want to change the theme. Now Ghosty supports some commands to help us out. Type Ghosty, and then we can just add plus, and tab for getting all the available options. BTW isn't such a great idea, that plus sign. I think more CLI apps should use that. Next, we can list the included themes for selecting one. That will give us a theme preview, which looks nice, but there is this little tiny annoying issue. You can see boss, but you can't touch. This. Ring the bell, school's back in. Break it down. Oh, oh, oh. What I mean is that we can't just select a theme directly from this screen, press enter, and set it. Instead, we should memorize the name. For instance, Blue Dolphin, open configuration, and type it. Oh, that autocomplete from ZAI. Yeah, nice. But we are not done yet, because every time we make a change on that file, we also need to manually reload the configuration. And sometimes that's not even enough. We need to actually restart the application for changes to take effect. That's not the case with the theme, so here it is. But it's the case for options like changing the padding and many others, which on other terminals work without the need to restart. Speaking of other terminals, Tixis can paint the whole window with the terminal color scheme. That's basically the header bar, but unfortunately, we can't do that with Ghosty. But what we can do with Ghosty is shaders, and most specifically shader toy shaders, and actually without any extra work because Ghosty uses shader toy API. So for example, we have this shader on shader toy, and then I have copied this, and I have modified it a bit, to include the common and buffer A routines into a single GLSL file. Next, I added a few things in ghosty config. In particularly, I have set the path to the shader, I have disabled the header bars just for looking cool, and I have set a background opacity that I hoped that would be like an alpha channel for the shader, but that didn't really work. Anywho, if I now start ghosty, I'll get this, which is good from far but far from good, because we can't really see the actual terminal content. I assume this is a bug, didn't find it on GitHub though, but I will upload another video if I'll figure it out. Another thing I wanna highlight here is that Ghosty uses OpenGL 4 and not Vulkan, and it should be metal when you run it on Mac. So perhaps shaders work a bit differently there. Um, now that I think about it, quite possibly, everything works better on Mac OS. Remember when I told you about that drop-down menu? That's a Mac OS only feature? Check this out. Imagine you have opened Ghosty and you do some work already, and perhaps you have opened some extra tabs. Meanwhile, let me do this one more time, because I love it. Um, and maybe you have also resized the window, the common stuff, okay? Now, the next time you will reopen it, the window will reset on its default state, and it's irrelevant if you like it or not. What's relevant is that there is a window save state option, which it can save all these things. So the next time you launch Ghosty, you'll get immediately back in work. But then documentation says, this is currently only supported on Mac OS. This has no effect on Linux. But that's all right, Chief, because Linux also have things that Mac OS doesn't, like this C group option that puts every surface like tabs, splits, and windows into a dedicated Linux C group. 
That's super hashtag sarcasm useful, because the resource management can be done on a per-surface granularity. For example, if a shell program is using too much memory, only that shell will be killed by the out-of-memory monitor instead of the entire ghosty process. Similarly, if a shell program is using too much CPU, only that surface will be CPU throttled. So, restore last window state, or C groups? Um, uh, let me think. But sarcasm aside, this also shows how serious Ghosty is regarding performance. And besides, not to forget that one of the main goals of Ghosty is to be used as an embedded terminal within other apps. So, on official documentation, it clearly states that in addition to being a standalone terminal emulator, Ghosty is a C-compatible library for embedding a fast, feature-rich terminal emulator in any third-party project. This library is called libghosty. Oh, and don't bother to find it because it doesn't exist yet, and, um... I'm a bit confused when non-existing projects are setting goals already. But back to reality, and in what we actually have, Ghosty is a terminal emulator that differentiates itself by being fast, feature-rich, and native. While there are many excellent terminal emulators available, they all force you to choose between speed, features, or native UIs. Ghosty provides all three. That didn't sound arrogant, but then it goes like, you can use Ghosty as a drop-in replacement for your existing terminal emulator, which is exactly what happened to me. I switched from Patixis to Ghosty, so the developer deserves all the ego he wants. Um, actually, I'm not completely thrilled with what I see, especially because there is a huge hype for this project that I don't think it delivers so far. But I hope that this hype will translate in contributions, and eventually we'll get a super nice open source terminal emulator. But I still remain Rio's supporter, which reminds me, this squared corners are rounded in Mac OS, damn it. And by the way, we are not done yet with Ghosty's weirdness. So if you think that GTK and Swift UI are the only toolkits in Ghosty, you're simply wrong. <laughs> Inspector uses Image UI, and we have some kitty stuff like a kitty protocol for shortcuts, the image loader. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello, kitty kitty. OMG, I bored my cat.